going to start off our second to last unit of the year. Uh, this unit's about differential equations. It's going to be kind of a short unit. Uh, we're not going to get uh, super in depth on solving lots of different types of differential equations. We're just going to kind of talk about what they are and how to solve some pretty basic differential equations and a couple couple simple things surrounding them. Uh, there's a you know there's a whole class specifically on differential equations that we're going to follow along in the math series after calculus. You'll eventually take. Uh, so, first question is, what is a differential equation? Well, differential equation is simply enough. It's just an equation that has a derivative in it, a dy dx term, a y prime, or something like that. It's just an equation with a derivative. Uh, differential equations can have different orders. So we call the order of a differential equation the highest derivative involved in the equation. So here we're looking at dy dx is equal to secant squared x plus 2x plus 5. This is just a first order differential equation. And because the largest derivative in it is dy dx. If I gave you this equation, the second derivative of y with respect to x minus dy dx equals x, or something like that, that'd be a second order differential equation because the highest derivative in it is a second derivative. So um, when you're asked to solve a differential equation, all that you're really being asked to do is to find all functions that make that true, all functions that have that thing, this, secant squared x plus 2x plus 5 as its derivative. So really, you're just looking for everything that makes this equation true, just like when you're normally solving an equation. Uh, <clears throat> the solution for this differential equation is just going to be called a general solution. Um, we're not really going to do any more uh, solving for general solutions of differential equations because there's not much to it. What we're um, really going to do is find particular solutions given some initial condition. But we're not given any initial condition here. Um, we're just told that dy dx is secant squared x plus 2x plus 5. So really, in order to solve this, all we've got to do is just integrate secant squared x plus 2x plus 5. So the integral of dy dx would be y. The integral of the derivative of y is just y. And we get the integral of secant squared is tangent x. The integral of 2x would be x squared. The integral of 5 would be 5x. And of course, we are looking for all functions that satisfy x. So we can attach any constant onto the integral. And that's really all you're going to have to do to find the general solution to a differential equation. Right? Just integrate <clears throat> that dy dx. Any rate, whatever dy dx is. So this is not what the most uh, the majority of the units. That's that's pretty straightforward. It's just what we did in the last week. What we will spend more time doing is looking at differential equations that are given an initial condition. So in this particular differential equation, dy dx equals e to the x minus six x squared, we are told that we want the particular solution. So that it must satisfy the point one zero. So if we were to graph our solution, it had to go through the point one zero. So in order to do this, the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to integrate. Right? That would tell us that y is equal to e to the x, because the integral of e to the x is e to the x. And then the integral of negative 6x squared, I'll go up to negative 6x cubed, you'll divide by 3. So that'll be minus 2x cubed plus some constant, okay? Um, so now we have to take our initial condition, the fact that when x equals one, y equals zero, we're gonna take that and we're gonna plug it in to our general solution. So if y is zero, we'll replace the y with zero. And if x is equal to one, this will give us e to the first minus 2 times 1 cubed plus c. And what this will do for us is it'll allow us to find 
the value of the constant that puts this solution uh, through the point one zero. So we end up with um, zero equals E minus two plus C, or our constant will be positive two minus E. So the solution is just what we had previously, right up here, this Y equals E to the X minus two Q plus C, but we'll replace the C with two minus E. So our final solution is gonna be Y equals E to the X minus two X cubed plus two minus E. And that is our particular solution satisfying the given initial. This is a very similar problem here. We're just looking at the particular solution to dy dx equals sine x plus 2x, given that the solution has a y-intercept of 3. So if it has a y-intercept of 3, that means it's got to satisfy the point 0, comma 3. So when we integrate dy dx equals sine x plus 2x, we're going to get y equals, and then the integral of sine, ought to be negative cosine, so we'll have negative cosine x. And then the integral of 2x ought to be x squared, and we'll add in our constant. And all we have to do is plug in 0 for x, and y is a 3. And solve for our constant. So we end up with 3 equals cosine of 0 is 1, so that's negative 1 plus c or C is four. So our particular solution here is Y equals negative cosine X plus X squared plus four. And if we were to take that derivative, we get sine X plus two X, and that graph goes through the point zero comma three, that's a Y intercept. <clears throat> I'm going to do a couple more of these because we've got a couple little things that we need to add to it. So we're going to find the particular solution to the differential equation dy dx equals x minus secant squared x. Given the initial condition that when y is 3, x is 0. So first we'll just integrate y equals the integral of x is x squared over 2 and the integral of negative secant squared is negative tangent x and we'll add our constant in. Then we'll plug in our x for our 0 for x and our 3 for y. So 0 squared is 0 over 2 is still 0. Minus tangent of 0 is also 0. And we get a constant 3. So just like the other ones, we'll go and we'll say our answer should be y equals x squared over 2 minus tangent x plus 3. But this is not actually our final answer because there's a little caveat to when you're looking for particular solutions um, given an initial condition to a differential equation. And that is your solution, and I'm going to write this up here, your solution is only valid on a single continuous interval. containing the initial condition. And what that means is we can only say um, that the solution to this differential equation has to be x squared over 2 minus tangent x plus 3 on one little chunk of the domain of that function. Um, anywhere outside of that chunk of the domain, that single continuous interval that includes our initial condition, we could have anything else as the solution to this, right? Because all we care about is on the continuous piece of it that includes x equals zero, that it is this function right here. So what we have to do is we have to think about what the domain of x squared over two minus tangent x plus three is. So if we think about the domain here, um, we could plug in anything for x, for x squared over 2, 
and the plus three over there is not going to affect anything. But tangent x has um, vertical asymptotes, right? Uh, our domain is, you know, x will just, this is such a real uh, great form for our domain, but we're going to say x can't be pi over 2 plus pi n, where n is any integer. Right, so that's where the tangent function has asymptotes. It's pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, 3 pi over 2 and negative 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, negative 5 pi over 2, and so on. Right. So then we have to think about what chunk of this domain contains x equals 0. So the only piece of it that contains 0 is going to be the piece that is between the asymptotes negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, because 0 is between those two values. So we need to make a statement here that says this is valid only on negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Outside of that interval, it doesn't really matter at all what um, function we were to put in there. We could add any other function, so it wouldn't have to be three. And the derivative would still be x minus secant squared x, and it would still go through the point zero to three um, with any constant, right? As long as on the interval negative pi over two to pi over two, it had a constant of three. And so we didn't really think about this for the previous couple because this one, well, negative cosine x plus x squared plus 4, that's valid for all real numbers. Right? So there's no discontinuities on this. This is valid on negative infinity to infinity. So we don't need to state that if it's true for all real numbers. Same here, e to the x minus 2x cubed plus 2 minus e. That's valid on negative infinity to infinity as well. And even the first one, which did have asymptotes, right, because of the tangent, this wasn't an initial condition problem, right? There was no specific interval that we, or specific value that we had to find for C. So um, for the entire domain of this function, it could be any of these, or any plus C. So let's take a look at one more of these here. We're going to look for the particular solution to the differential equation um, 1 over t or dA dt equals 1 over t minus 1 over t squared plus 6. And we're going to have the initial condition that when a is 0, t is 1. So if we integrate, we'll end up with a equals, and then 1 over t should integrate to become natural log absolute value t. And negative 1 over t squared, that's a negative t to the negative 2. So when we go up to a power of negative 1 and divide by negative 1, that's going to become a positive 1 over t, uh, or positive t to the negative 1. And then plus 6, so we plus 6t, and we'll still throw in our constant there. And so now we'll just plug in 0 for a and 1 for t, 1 over 1 is 1, and then plus 6 plus c. The natural log of 1 is 0, so we've got 0 equals 7 plus c, or c is negative 7. So our solution here will be a equals natural log absolute value t plus 1 over t plus 6t minus 7. But this clearly has some discontinuities on it. We know that t cannot be 0. That we can take the natural log of any positive number, but we can't take the natural log of 0. And we also can't divide by 0. So 1 over t also restricts uh, 0 from the domain. So t cannot be 0. That's the only restriction on our domain here. And so we can then say, well, the continuous piece of this that includes 1 would be from 0 to infinity. And if you want to, and it's not necessary, you can eliminate the absolute value off of that t now because we've restricted the domain of this uh, to only positive numbers. So taking the absolute value of any, any of those domain values that we threw in there wouldn't actually affect it at all. But that's up to you. You can leave the absolute value or take it.
Don't take it off though if uh, you do have negative values. In so here's one that's going to be a little bit different. We're going to find a solution to this differential equation f of x such that f of 7 equals 3. And then after that, we're going to come down here, we're going to find f of 2. Now, the problem here is that y equals e to the negative x squared, the function e to the negative x squared, doesn't have what we call an elementary antiderivative. Right? There's actually not a way for us to anti-differentiate this. So our only option here is to say that y, which would be f of x, is going to be equal to, well, let's see here. When we integrate something uh, and we end up with like a value at the end, we want to have a definite integral. So we're going to do a definite integral from some constant to x of our function. And whenever you integrate something, you also get constant attached to the end of it. So, this is the general solution to this, but we're stuck in a place here where we're saying that we've now got two different constants we need to know. Right, we need to know what A is right, in our lower limit, and we need to know what that plus C value is. So we're going to be clued into what those are from this f of 7 is equal to 3. Right, so if I have f of x is equal to this integral from A to x, then f of 7 must equal an integral from a to 7 of e to the negative x squared dx plus some constant. Well, we know that f of 7 has to equal, didn't quite give myself enough room here, but f of 7 has to equal 3. But we don't have a way to evaluate an integral from some constant to 7 of e to the negative x squared unless we allowed the value of a to equal 7, right? If we let a equal 7, we now have an integral from 7 to 7 of e to the negative x squared dx plus c must equal 3. And from earlier on in this, uh, or from last unit actually, we know that the integral from a constant 7 so that same constant, 7, of any function must equal 0, which is going to tell us then that this is 0, and our constant must be 3. So if a equals 7, c must be 3. And that will give us f of x is equal to an integral from 7 to x of e to the negative x squared dx plus 3. So we've now found our particular solution um, that satisfies f of 7 must equal 3. Oh, we still need to find f of 2. f of 2 then must just be an integral from 7 to 2 of e to the negative x squared dx plus 3. Well, conveniently enough, um, our graphing calculator is more than capable of approximating the integral from e to the negative x squared uh, of e to the negative x squared from 7 to 2. So if we pull up our calculator here, and we try to find the integral, and we're going to need to learn how to find an integral on in our graphing calculator, we're going to hit the math button. We're going to go down to option nine, which you can also just hit nine. And um, that option is F N I N T. It's just going to pull up an integral symbol. And we're going to want to integrate from a lower limit of seven to an upper limit of two of the function e to the negative x squared dx. And then we'll, after that integral, we'll add in our constant that we had, which was 
plus three. And it should just evaluate that for us. We'll get 2.995854465. And on the AP test, you can always round to three decimals. So we'll just round that to 2.996. Never round to less than three decimals unless it specifies, and never round until you get to your final answer in a problem. We have 2.9 units. And it's perfectly acceptable on the calculator section of the AP test to use the calculator to evaluate any definite integral. Um, there's no problem with that. They're expecting you on the calculator section. So let's take a look at another one that is similar to this. Um, we got f of 2 is what we're looking for. Given that f prime is x to the fourth times sine x, and that f of 3 is 5. Now, um, this function is actually a function that could be integrated. It's not an integral uh, that you'll learn about until you take Calc 2. You integrate this using integration by parts. Um, but since we're only in Calc 1, we're just going to allow our calculator to do some of the work for us. Right? We know that f of x has to be an integral from some constant to x of this function. Plus some other constant. Um, and we know that when we plug in 3, that gives us an integral from a to 3 of our function. It has to equal 5. So that would tell us that if our lower limit, a, was equal to 3, then that integral from 3 to 3 of x to the 4 sine x dx would become 0. And it would allow us to find that our constant was 5. So f of x must then be an integral from 3 to x of x to the fourth sine x dx plus 5, leading us to be able to find the value of f of 2. And, and if this was the AP test, you would need to actually write this out. You need to write f of 2 is equal to the integral from 3 to 2 of x to the fourth sine x dx plus 5. And then you just go in and you use your calculator to evaluate what that was. We hit math, option 9, F-N-I-N-T. We'd be integrating from 3 to 2 of x to the 4 sine x dx. And then we'd add 5 to it. And we'd end up with negative 14.9882732. And we can approximate that as negative 14.988. And it's pretty common in uh, the multiple choice for them to just give you a question worded almost exactly like this um, with some function that you don't know how to integrate. And it's exceptionally common in the free response that you'll need to use your calculator to evaluate some. It's important that you know how to do all of this. All right, so here we're going to find f of 2 if f prime of x is 1 over ln x and f of 9 is 5. So I think we hopefully have the process down here. Um, we should now, I think, be able to just make the jump to say that f of x here is going to equal an integral from, well, that lower limit, that constant, always comes out to be this value that we were evaluating it at, at 9. So we're going to say 9 to x of 1 over ln x dx plus, and then the second constant always comes out to be the y value, the uh, given information. So if we're looking for f of 2, that must be an integral from 9 to 2 of 1 over ln x dx plus 5. 
So we can just go into our calculator. Again, it's math nine. We're going to do an integral from nine to two of one over natural log of x dx. And make sure when you put that plus five there, that that's outside the integral. If you put that plus five inside the integral, you're going to get um, a completely wrong answer. And it looks like that gives us 0 0.32392603 or 0 0.324 if we round it will be 0 0.324. And again, three decimals is always good enough for the AP test. Never round to less than three decimals unless they specify otherwise. So that's going to be it for today. Um, next time we're going to take a look at some motion differential equation problems. So we're going to we've done motion with derivatives. Now we're going to do motion with integrals. So instead of just being able to go um, down the line from position to velocity to acceleration, we should now be able to come the opposite direction from acceleration to velocity to position. That's our goal for next time. Uh, that's our basic intro to differential equations and finding particular solutions to differential equations.